Hello Attitude Trending How to become a top property preservation vendor Starting a property preservation business If you choose the right path, the property preservation industry can be a rewarding and lucrative career. Working for asset management firms or running a firm that contracts with HUD lenders and retailers for investors are two options. Here are the steps to becoming a property preservation vendor. That all sounds great, but what is the step-by-step -step process to creating a property preservation business? Here is an overview of a plan to start a preservation company. Number one, check the state and local license requirements in your area. Licenses are not required in all states. Property preservation does not require a license in and of itself, but the jobs you do may. General contractor licenses, plumbing licenses, roofing licenses, electrical licenses, and so on. Instead of general contractor licenses, some counties and cities will require a local licenses, such as a local contractor license. Some states, such as California, also require specific certifications, such as MOL certifications. So before you decide to enter the industry, make sure you do your homework. Number two, check out the competition. There are many preservation companies in the area and you don't want to be covering an area that is saturated with contractors who only get few work orders per month. Make certain that you have a competitive opportunity in your area. Number three, apply for property preservation contractor positions. Pro tip, sign up for our preservation vendor directory to receive job alerts in your area. Due to the large amounts of paperwork and the required investment to execute jobs that may be out of their league, most preservation businesses that are just getting started will not go directly to a national directory or job board. Find out who the regional preservation companies are in the areas you serve or look into smaller property preservation companies and inquire about open positions or opportunities. Number four, go through the hiring interviews. Before you sign a contract, you will almost certainly be required to go through an interview process. Hiring companies will require you to have certain types of insurance, including work comp insurance if you have any employees or people helping you part time and apply for certain licenses, but most of them will not require these things before interviewing you, so you don't have to buy anything before the interviews. Number five. Apply for all relevant licenses, insurance types, and certifications. It's now time to take action on step one. Investigate licenses, insurance, and relevant certifications. Determine how much it will cost you and the best way to obtain everything you require. Number six, purchase some property preservation supplies, especially personal protective equipment, PPE. You will be exposed to abandoned properties, run-down houses, and hazardous trash as a property preservation professional, and you need to look after your team. Even simple tasks like mowing the lawn can be hazardous, and you must be protected. Your insurance company, let alone the people who work with you, will undoubtedly appreciate it. This is a critical point, and ignoring it may subject you to legal liability. Number seven. Go through training. The good news is that many hiring companies, particularly large, regional, state-wide, or national preservation firms, have very standardized training programs and detailed onboarding processes for vendors where you'll be taught how to proceed with virus-filled services and what's expected of you. Most of them manage work orders using their own software or computer systems and you'll be required to submit proof of your work through these. As a result, training also entails becoming acquainted with and operating these systems. Okay, but what if 
I have no experience in the property preservation industry. If you lack experience, starting a business right away may not be the best idea. Your top priority should be to gain some experience and learn how things are supposed to be done. Begin by looking for local property preservation companies. Conduct a Google or Bing search to see what types of businesses are already established in your area. Your goal should be to collaborate with a company and a crew that is already in business and does property preservation work. This means avoiding, at least initially, large regional or national property preservation firms that simply oversource or subcontract the work. Inquire about job opportunities. Consider volunteering if no companies are hiring. When starting out, the primary goal is to gain experience and it's fine to let companies know that. It is critical that you market yourself. You need experience to go out there and work for yourself. Also mentioning that you have your own equipment and transportation, as well as informing providers that they will not be required to pay for anything, may help you stand out from the competition. When you arrive, ask questions. Learn the terminology, methodology, and specifics of competing property preservation work orders effectively. In short, start off small. If you lack like experience, utilize the vrmco.com and Google. Look for small businesses in your area to have job openings. If there are none, offer to help with anything they may require. Subscribe to our channel for more information. See you next time.